Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day, Lord, and we want to thank you for the the many blessings that, that you put in our lives, Father. You're working in our lives each and every day, Lord, to, to help us grow closer to you, Father. But most importantly, we want to thank you for your Son who hung on that cross for our sins, Father, so we could gain that relationship with the Father through you. Lord, we just pray that you you work through this this podcast today, Father, that that you just get that you help us reveal the evidence that you've what you've done in our lives and the way you continue to work in our lives, Father. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. 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 My name is Gareth. And today we have Brett Waugh. Doesn't miss a thing, ladies and gentlemen. So be prepared for him to catch on to some stuff. Got Mr. Tim Cook, Austin Reed Cook, and Miss Linda Cook. Got them all right that yeah, time. There you go. Nailed Amen. it. Amen. <laughs> now, we talk about the importance of names, and, and that is an important thing. So uh, something I learned here at the ministry is always right to get names right. That's important. Um, so anyways, um, guys, uh, for those of you who don't know Reed, um, he has uh, been at the ministry for a while now. He's from Winona, Mississippi. I'll let him tell you more about his own story. But he was actually my neighbor when he moved in. Um, so he's in the DeSoto house, and that's how many months ago? Uh, Seven or eight. Eight. Working, working, working on eight. Working on eight, yeah. So, I mean, you were my neighbor for a while, I yep. mean, until I graduated and moved out. So, oh, man, the growth that, that we've got to see and um, you, you being a part of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you went with Brent this last weekend on Ticket Trail, which, <laughs> yeah. Fastest face. Fastest yeah, face. Out. <laughs> Can't punch him. Nah, you're not going to get it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I know you had a good time doing that, but, man, you uh, and your family, you know, we got families in here now doing some of these podcasts, and, and it's it's because you guys make a difference in our life as well. Um, you know, we got on our pamphlet, it says, you know, that this will touch, I think it says 7 to 15 members of your family. 15 to 20 it might be. I need to actually read it since I 10, hand those 10 to out. 15. I got a bad memory, <coughs> but... You know, it. you see the most families are, are touched by this ministry, but then you got some of those families, um, they are actually a part of our lives. You know, they sew back into us. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to allergy season at the moment. If you'll notice, all right. all, all, we're all a little sinusy, but that's okay. Jesus heals that too. That's right. You know? um, but, you know, like I was saying, you, you guys have been always been so kind to us. Um, I won't go off on too much of a rampage right now, but I want to thank you all for being on the show. And, um, Reed, if you will, go ahead and introduce them, who they are to you. Okay. uh, To my left here is my father, Tim Cook, and to the right is my mother, Linda. Um, (laughs) There you go. That's a good start. Okay. uh, I don't know where to go. What do you need to do from there? Well, you know, you can um, just kind of – so people are watching this, you know, and they, um, they're they wondering. You, when I came here, my family was, was broken. I had done the breaking, um, you know, and, and we cause a lot of, of death and destruction. I know a lot of um, families have to deal with that. A lot of families have guilt for right. what they feel like is their part in our decisions, um, you know, and, and I know we're, we're taught otherwise here. We're taught that those are our decisions. Yeah. Um, you know, what would you say that they've been here for you um, as your time as a resident here? A hundred percent. They they have they've always supported me even through you know, I've been through two other programs, which were thirty day programs, uh but they've had my back hundred and ten percent the whole time through through my addiction and, and through the program, but, but coming here to John three and, and me finally coming to the knowledge of the truth and gaining this relationship with Jesus Christ, the way our family has molded back together, not just with them, but with my siblings and, and things like that, uh, they have been extremely wonderful to me in this time, in, in, in these seven months that I've been here. Uh, and, I, and I'm very fortunate for that, to have such loving and, and passionate parents you know because there, there are some people here that they don't have that opportunity you know and, and it's great that that God has restored us because now I get to not only serve God with all of my family but I get to help minister 
you know, with my family, and we all have one big testimony, and, and we can we can use that testimony to help men like us that are sitting in this room, you know, struggling with addiction, and, and I'm, I'm I'm grateful for that. I truly am. Amen. Amen. You um you're a loving person, man. You you know we we talk we teach Jesus seven days a week here. Um, and, and so we learn about him seven days a week here as well, and uh, we get to praise and worship on Sunday, but every other day we're, we're in God's word, and you know, something that I remember was you would, you made it a point, while, before I graduated, you made it a point to pull me to the side and, and tell me something that was special, you know, that you noticed was special, and, and you notice I, every time they're here, you, you guys are either on the front row or close to it. You know, praise and worship is important to you guys. I know music's important to y'all's family. Um, Mr. Tim, how has uh, how's the praise and worship affected your family? Well, it's, <clears throat> it's done really a lot. It's, uh, you know, with me personally, I would, when we first started coming, I would, I would sit there and uh, I'd watch all these guys come down and tears running down their face and raising their hands to God, and I just thought, man, they are so humble, mm. you know, and I thought, when we keep coming, we keep coming, and <clears throat> then I'd sit there, and I'd say, finally got to the point, I just said, God, I want to be like them, mm. so the ministry has broke us, broke me in two, as well as what it's done for him, mm. you know, I was raised in church all my life, and got one of the most God lovingest mothers there is and uh <clears throat> but you know what Ree's done we, <clears throat> that's yesterday. You know, and we and all the guys out there, that's yesterday. Mm. And we're not living in yesterday. We're living for today. That's right. And tomorrow. That's right. You know, and uh I just thank God that you know, four or five years ago we were gonna bring him here and he wasn't going to have it, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, he, you know, and I, like I told you, my family, I said, you know, we all had to be broken for God to put him here because he knew what a special place this was, and for God to put us all here, we all had to be to a certain point in our life to where he could heal, to where we could heal, <coughs> Landon, the kids, all of them, and it's and John three sixteen has done all that through Jesus, you right. know, of course. So, Amen. So, but anyway, if that answers what you. Yeah, said. that that's exactly it. You know, it's <clears throat> Brent's the first one I heard say this. Um, you know, but I know he had heard it uh, from somebody else. But uh, you know how you talk about um, God doesn't uh, want to fix something that's cracked. He he wants to fix something that's broken completely. Uh, and you word that differently, but. Um, and that's, that's what he's done with y'all's family, uh, with, with all of our families. But, um, Brent, I know that you, uh, you took Reed to, uh, to sell tickets this last week. And, uh, you know, I, I was biased. So I, I have like this really bad issue with not being biased towards the guys in the DeSoto house. So I try not to say like all the good about them that I feel. Cause I'm like, well, he'd be good for this, and he'd be good for that, so I just got to hold my peace. And, and you know, Brent came up to me the other day. He's like, why didn't you tell me, you know, that, that Tanner would have been good selling tickets, or why didn't you, you know, tell me that Reed would have been good selling tickets? And I'm like, oh, because I'm not allowed, or I shouldn't. I don't want to show favoritism. <laughs> but uh, but Brent's got a knack for noticing when people are, are he, he can spot spiritual gifts in, in people. Um and begin to bring those out. And he has a way that he does it a little bit differently than other people, um, you know, and that's what makes him unique. But uh, tell us a little bit about y'all's experience this week. Absolutely. We went to um, – Reed, where did we go this week? Wynn, Arkansas. Wynn, Arkansas, that's right. <laughs> so uh, I like I like going to Wynn because Mark will be like, when, where are you going this week? And I'll say, Wynn, and he'll say, like, no, where are you going this week? <laughs> and I'll say, Wynn. <laughs> and it just keeps going, you know, and I think it's always funny. But uh, we had Reed in the truck, and Wynn, Arkansas has is a great farming community, a great town right outside of it called Cherry Valley where, uh, you know, we have some guys that come through the ministry or from that area. 
and uh, getting to go out down there and, and talk to people about what Jesus is doing here is why we do Ticket Trail, uh, you know, to spread hope, to spread love, to hand out pamphlets and literature, and to raise a little funds, you know, of course, and, and we make a competition of it. So uh, we had sent you to Forest City, <coughs> yeah, and I gave you the good side of the road. And yes, I know it's the good side of the road. <laughs> yes, you did. All right, so we were behind the behind the eight ball, if you will. We were behind, I don't know, that's just an old saying, yeah, I guess. That's but, right. We were behind the eight ball, and and you were, you know, I knew you were established. You're you're just gonna hit business to business and start raking them in. Well, we we get down there at like ten thirty, trying to chase our tail around with some farmers, um, and uh, get down there and Reed Reed's like, well, we need to probably pull over here at that cafe again. I thought he was fishing for a biscuit and gravy, you know, <laughs> uh, but it was actually Kevin that was fishing for the biscuit and gravy. Reed just wanted to go in and try to sell some tickets, so. Uh, we go inside this place, and the, uh, a guy named Bryson, a guy named James, run it, and it's called what? What's it called again? Jim and Greg. Jim and Greg's Cafe, right outside of Wynn in Colt, Arkansas. So we want to say thank y'all for feeding us. Thank y'all for for letting us come in and talk to everybody, your patrons, out there. So shout out to Bryson and James for for that. But but Reed Reed goes in with the sign. He is the sign guy, you know. <laughs> but um, just because I can trust him to bring it every stop. Right, and, there you you know, <laughs> Kevin's a handful, so I just, Kevin, you just bring yourself, <laughs> and then Reed, just you, you know, you're you're with me. I'll bring the tickets and the pen, you yeah. know, and and we fought over the same pen. Like I, I had this purple pen, anyhow. It's a good pen. Um, <coughs> and we all tried to use it in this one stop. Whenever Reed's walking from table to table, talking to people about what we're doing, and and he didn't just do that at Jim and Greg's. He also did it at Johnson's and Win. So. Thank you for y'all at Johnson's for helping us as well, That's right. um, you know, for feeding us down there. And he talked to a table full of pastors mm. from from all over the all over the place. Yeah, and he and they asked him what his story was. You know, we we had our he had his back turned to him, and I, I was listening to him the whole time. They're they're talking about well, if I knew he was ready for a place, I'd get him in a place. And you know, they're talking about dealing with addiction, and and right here we are, the table next to him. Being wearing the shirts we're wearing, being in the places that we're at, and being, uh, you know, weapons for Jesus at that point in time, uh, being in his arsenal, and they didn't know, you know, I don't think they knew. One of them did, but he didn't say anything to us, you know. He had his back to us, and, but I was just listening to him, and I said, "Reed, go over there and talk to him." Hmm. And so Reed just turns around, and stands up, and goes and talk to him. He gets to share a story with them. Yeah. And uh, and man, they they prayed for him. Uh, they prayed for all of us. And, you know, it's it's not often that, that people will pray for us. You know, we are always the ones praying for everyone. Mm. Um, but they prayed for us. And, and I, I, you know, I, I noticed a, a big change in Reed and, and how he was received. Yeah. He, 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 got, he gained boldness and courage. Yeah. Jesus was equipping him through that, that just short time period. It is a five-minute time period, but Jesus equipped him with the ability to talk about Jesus, about him, to anybody. Right. And, uh, man, I... I that's when I saw and read. I was like, "This guy needs to talk to everybody we stop and talk to." Very personable, you know. And and we also called his dad uh, on the phone. You know, that's part of Ticket Trail. We'll call a family. We'll, we'll say, "Hey, we 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 need some help selling these tickets." And his dad, Mr. Tim, uh, sent back a list of twelve people, fifteen people, and he's like, "No, you got to call this one now. Call this one. They're expecting your phone call. They're good for ten tickets." You know. Um, so his family is, is highly involved with, with our ministry because of what they're seeing the ministry do. Right. You know, I don't want to just steal the show, but I, I could talk to you all about everything that's going on with, with this family. Um, all the good. All the good. Yeah. Um, you know, the evidence that they see is getting them involved with our ministry even deeper. Right. Uh, and the families that do that, Mr. Tim, are the ones that you see in here whose dads are, you know, are in the back of the room bringing guys in on Sunday. Uh, and, and, you know, as a family unit, y'all are able to testify to men struggling with drugs and alcohol addiction because it, it was part of your life. Yeah. See, what you're brought out of is something that you can help bring others out of because you were brought out of it. Yeah. So as a mother, you can, uh, you can tell somebody, look, my son was like this, and now he's like this. Um, That's right. Or Mr. Tim could say, my son was like this, but now he's, he's completely different. He's a new creation. And then yeah. Reed could be that new creation that his family's talking about. Yeah. Um, so it's about following through with that too, because everybody in Win knows who you are and where you're from now. Right, right. Uh, this is Mr. <laughs> this is Reed, but I'm uh, my name's Austin Cook. They call me Reed. 
And yeah. I'm from Winona, Mississippi. <laughs> Amen. And that's how I introduced him. But it's been a pleasure, a blessing to, to get, a, get out there and watch what Jesus is doing in your life and watching him equip you. Reed. It's really yeah. great. It, was, it really was a great opportunity. You know, you're talking about sitting at the table with those pastors. I got to share with, with them a little bit of my testimony and things like that. And I had told them that, you know, I hadn't seen my son in, in a year, and my son's name's Asher. When he asked me if he could pray for me, he he said, I'd like to pray for you and your son. What's your son's name? And I said, Asher. And he said, wait, what? I said, it's Asher. And he said, are you serious? I said, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm serious. Why? And he said, well, the, it's such an uncommon name, but my son's name is Asher. Mm. And so in a sense, it was like God was giving me that confirmation of hope and, you know, that peace of, of I don't have to worry about my time because my time will be restored with him, you know, as, as long as I continue to remain obedient and do exactly what Christ has called me to do. And, yeah. and so, you know, that that's, that's one of the reasons I absolutely loved getting to go this past week on Ticket Trail was the spiritual growth, man. It's just, it's a refresher, you know, for you spiritually. And, and so I'm, I'm forever grateful for that trip. So. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm over here getting soft on y'all. You know, it's like I don't know. You know, it. Your, you, your eyes are sweating. Yeah, you can you can just feel the spirit of the Lord sometimes, man. And and when you see that boldness, because um, we all we all get to serve in different places day in and day out. You know, and and Reed would he he pick at me a little bit sometimes. Man, you don't come down and hang out at the house anymore. And and um and man, I I hate that. You know, because I love I'll forever be a Desoto house guy. Um, but you know, it's, um, it's like, that was the first time I've got to sit down and think long enough to hear the spirit of the Lord coming out of your mouth. And that's just, I'm excited. I think you, you might get to go with me this week. Um, so, all right, we got to do some microphone moving real quick. I got one question for Miss Linda. She said, she told me she, I better not ask her any questions. Um, but we'll get it to where, where she can tell us, um, all right, Miss Linda, you are um, you're such a such an inspiration to me um, in seeing just someone that cares uh, for others. You know, you you just do. Um, it, you can see it. I mean, it's like everybody that's in that house and other houses. Um, you know, I know AC was like that. Just different guys for y'all. It's like they became, you know, your son as well. Um, if you could give a little bit of hope to those guys that, um, you know, wh whether the families are, are listening right now and um, and they're wondering, you know, if, if should I come and visit them? Or, or maybe it's that guy that doesn't have any family that's worried about not getting visits. Uh, what would you say to them? Just stay strong. Yeah. And... God will make a way, and that's our prayer for him. And I do love all these guys here. Everybody that we come to know, we've fallen in love with them, and we treat them like family. Mm -hmm. And if you have somebody here and you're not visiting them, you need to, because this place will not only change them, they change you. That's it right. will change you. God changes you. And, I mean, like my husband said, we go to church, you know, every Sunday, every Wednesday. But this has been just something bigger. This place has been, we can't tell anybody enough how amazing this place is. And the people here, and my heart just goes out to people. I mean, we pray for y'all guys all the time. And it's just wonderful. Amen. Amen. I hope I don't get in too much trouble for putting her on the spot right there. She's going to get me. But, you know, it's just we, uh, I don't know, I just I know that we appreciate y'all. Yep. Um, you know, it's, we we live this day in and day out. And, and <laughs> Eric's back there. He's he's running sound today. He's going to get me for saying that one, too. He doesn't, no recognition. I get it. But, you know, it's. We live this day in and day out, and and um, 
it, you know, it's 24-7 um, what we're taught, putting other people first. Um, and, and so when we get to see a family uh, that starts mirroring exactly what we teach here, well, then it's got to be getting into them through the resident. You know, yeah, it, on service a little bit, but who spends more time talking to y'all than we I, I know than I do because I get to stop and say hello to you guys, you know, maybe on a Sunday. And, and um, so I know where it's coming from. And, and, and exactly what you said about, you know, just praying for that softened heart. Um, that touched me when you said that. You know, I was, I was just praying for that. So I wanted to be like those guys. Man, that's powerful. I about got chill bumps right there. That's powerful right there. You know, got, got a, a, a grown man, a father um, who hadn't, you know, necessarily struggled with the exact same, we, same thing we've struggled with. Um, praying, I want to be like that guy you know, that's hitting, hitting his knees, giving it all to the Lord. Um, I don't know. I'm just grateful to uh, be able to talk to y'all today. Um, and, and, you know, as we're wrapping up, Reed, I, I'll ask you, um, you know, have, do you feel like a, a charge has been, I know you've expressed it to me, but this is for everybody else, um, a charge has been put on you to help help men? Most definitely. Uh, you know, that that's one of the things that I know I'm called to do is to help men like me that have been through the things that I've been through and, and suffered what I've suffered. But my heart's been leaning more towards youth groups. And the reason I say youth groups is because the first time I ever got high uh, or, or drank was 13 years old, and, and I dealt with some things, you know, growing up and got into to, to wanting to – to cut myself and things like that to try to find relief from, from the pain that was inside. And I just feel like that, you know, as men that come from the walk of a life that we, we come from, you know, and then come to the knowledge of the truth and gain this relationship with Jesus, I, I really think that I, f I know, I don't think, I know in my heart that we should stress more to the youth simply because, we know, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm pretty sure that you probably started off at a real young, early age, you know, and and I just feel, I know that we should do, we should stress to them that that, that walk of life is, it's not worth the pain and the suffering and the, the shame and guilt, you know, and, and that that's just what I really feel in my heart that, that God wants me to do is to, you know, mo most youth pastors growing up were had white picket fence lives. You know what I mean? Had had pretty normal lives, and I just feel like with what I've been through and, and what God's brought me out of, that that I should not only share with men like me, but the youth. And 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 that being said, it is because they need to know the steps they're going to take and where it's going to take them. So this is you know this is the opportunity to to lay all that down at his feet and turn from that and, and to serve to serve Christ. And, and I just I feel like they need to hear the testimony of somebody that's really been in that pit before they decide to jump off into that pit, you know, because it, it I, man, I have put these two wonderful people through it. I mean, I, I, have, I have heard them because of the decisions I've made and, and, and things like that, but but by the grace of God, I, I'm, I get to sit here and do this today That's right. with y'all and them and, and get to share our testimony, his testimony, with the people that are watching. And, and it's just a blessing to, to get to do this. Uh, he, he kept me from coughing the whole time. and <laughs> so, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very honored to get to be a part of, of John 3 and, and to know that this is where I found Jesus. You know, and and it'll always be special to me and to my family, and you know. But I do. I, I love love all you guys. You know, y'all y'all have all been good to me and 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 helped me in tremendous ways. So, uh, but but yeah, that. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to thank all you guys. Um, I want to thank y'all for coming. I want to thank everybody for watching, and um, I just want to remind you if you don't already. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. 
Uh, check out our Spotify um, podcast. Check out the podcast on Apple Music, or Apple Podcasts, rather. And, um, you know, if you know anybody that needs help, send them our way. That's why we're here. Um, so we got the website up top of the video, and you got the uh, phone number on the other side. So we love y'all. And, uh, yeah, right where Brent's pointing. Phone number, website. I bet you they're backwards. but I hope not. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, guys, thank y'all for uh, tuning in uh, to John 316, where we don't offer treatment. We offer the cure. <laughs>